There we go. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so this morning, my inspiration came from uh, for our bird sit came from my run. And during the run, um, yeah, I was just reminded a lot of, of spring. And uh, I was debating with myself on whether or not to to follow my inspiration because I know a lot of you maybe aren't necessarily feeling the same extent of spring that I might be feeling currently. Um, so it might not even feel like spring where you are. However, I have a feeling that um, because I know a lot of you are, some of you are, are a few weeks um, different than where I am. And I don't want to say like behind or ahead necessarily, but um, I started to, to get some sensations of spring almost a month ago. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to be sitting with that a little bit today and connecting with the birds in that regard related to, um, to just our sensations and, and what we're allowing our body to feel um to feel some of the environment around us um because i'm always so impressed with the birds and their ability to know things um sometimes before oftentimes before we do and they just know things about the world and um maybe it's their senses maybe it's something else but let's just play with this today sound good okay so good to see you all hi ann and cheryl hello della hi joy and julia <laughs> Didn't say hi to you all individually before, but good to see you. So you're all in your nice favorite spots, and it's actually nice and sunny where you are. That looks great. Yeah, thumbs up for you. All right, so how about everyone just take a look around you. Just take in the, the sight around you for a moment. Noticing what might be new on your landscape. And as you're glancing around, go ahead and take that gaze and turn it inward, inward to your own self. And if you want, you can close your eyes for this next little bit, or you can keep them open, whatever feels right for you. Just notice your body, see what, what's talking to you in this moment, whether it's a message of ease and calm and comfort or a message of discomfort and maybe some grumbles, who knows, but just listen to your body. Let's see what, what our bodies tell us in this moment. Now, some of you might have been tuning into the physical sensations. Maybe you're noticing your muscle tightness or flexibility. You might also be listening to your heartbeat or your breath. Maybe it's your posture you're attuned to. Whatever it is, go ahead and, and keep moving around. Keep noticing other aspects of your physical experience. And don't forget the little people, like your toes your little pinky finger, maybe your earlobe. Really just explore the experience of being in your body this morning. What's it like to be on in the inside of your ear? All these funny little places in our bodies that, that we might not think about at first. And then wherever you have landed in your body, just take a nice deep breath in and then let it go. Let's do one more. Try to fill your lungs even more completely. Sit up a little bit taller if you're not already. And then let your breath go. And as you let it go, just let it sink down into the earth, releasing any tension 
any thoughts that you might be holding on to allow the earth to receive all of that right now just letting her transmute letting her she just takes all of that receives it there's no good or bad in the eyes of the earth not that i'm the eyes of the earth but that's the sense i get that there's no good or bad out there according to her and she just receives what we have so go ahead and just let it go And then for those of you who might not necessarily want to let go of all your stuff to the earth, you can also send her a blessing right now. So way down deep in the earth, just send a blessing or some thoughts of gratitude to your place on this earth today and her holding us as she does in all of her wild forms. And when you feel ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes and find just something off in the distance to gently gaze toward. Go ahead and allow your eyes to start to soften and start to expand further and further allowing your vision your peripheral vision to expand in all directions all around you and just notice as you go softer and softer with your gaze if anything starts to shift on your inner landscape notice if your breath changes or your heart rate Notice if your shoulders might start to soften. And then just see what the earth wants to share with you right now. Noticing what comes into your view. Today we're going to be looking for and listening to the subtleties around us. So just see what you can begin to pick up on, the little subtle movements that you can see when you stay in that softened gaze. And without changing your gaze just yet, stay nice and soft. Start to allow your sense of hearing to just feel around and explore the landscape. Just let yourself go like a child would across the landscape, going to the most, the sounds that are most curious to you. Let yourself stay with them, one of them for a moment or two, and then move on like you're on an adventure or a journey across your yard through your ears And it's also been a common experience for us to listen to the sounds that are most near, maybe some of the loudest, the closest. So now that you've been exploring your landscape, now you can pause wherever you are and then really stretch your ears and see if you can hear the sounds that are beyond that zone that's most close to you, the most comfortable zone.
Some of you might have a really familiar voice in your yard. Let's say it's a, it could be a wren, it could be a cardinal, it could be a jay. So whatever voice is, if you have a bird that's singing right now, go ahead and listen to that voice, but then see if you can then listen for the next closest voice of that one. So where is the next nearest crow or the next nearest wren out on the landscape further out from where you currently are? See if you can track that and find that bird. And let yourself play with that with a few different voices. And if there's no voices right now, if it's just utterly quiet where you are, I want you just to think about a bird that you might normally hear during this time and then see if you can find that farther out on the landscape. It's good to be in touch with our neighbors and just like the birds, they're attuned to their neighbors and the next nearest cardinal or the next nearest jay or whatnot. And uh, for some of us, we might not have heard anything. That, that Just the practice of stretching, stretching your ears, stretching the idea of what you think is possible is a really good step to take. So whether or not you heard anything, that doesn't matter just engaging in that practice for now. That's the important part. So now we're going to play a little bit with this idea of spring and knowing what spring is. So let's begin first with our eyes. And I'd like you just to look across the landscape and look for signs of spring with your eyes to see how many different signs of spring. You can stay with them if you find one and explore it a little bit. Some of you might have to look a little bit harder than others. Just see what you can find. See what you can find the first signs of spring just using our eyes to begin. And you don't have to limit yourself to simply like a plant growing. It could be a behavior of a bird, for instance. So we'll, we'll remember the birds in this practice. So go ahead and allow yourself to look for behaviors or subtle movements that, that might indicate something is different on the wind.
Also, don't forget to include the human-made world. Maybe there's things in the human-made world around you that indicate that spring is on its way. Good work. So now we're going to shift over to our ears. You can still look around, but do your best. And if, if you might be someone that um, you know already that you're going to get distracted with your eyes, or maybe you just want to sort of reduce the distractions and, and quiet your mind a little bit right now, you're welcome to close your eyes for this next part. And now let's just listen and use our ears to see if, let's say we weren't able to see the world around us. What might indicate through our ears that spring is on its way? You're welcome to keep your eyes closed if you have them closed right now. And some of you may already have been doing this. I know it was hard for me not to. And now we're going to layer in our sense of smell. So do your best to, to focus this next period on your nose. Just taking in the scents around you and seeing if you can smell anything that indicates that spring is on its way.
it work. So now again, if you want to keep your eyes closed, you can, or you're welcome to open your eyes for this last part. It might be a little bit easier to keep your eyes closed, but whatever you want to do. And now we're going to move to our felt sense. So when you hear certain sounds or smell certain smells, or even without them, we can be without them, <laughs> I want you just to tap into your body sensations and notice if there's anything that you're picking up from a physical sense or an intuitive sense that tells you that spring is on the way. And just let yourself play with this one because this can be edgy for some people. And uh, yeah, just pretend like you're a kiddo again. You're just having fun and we're just playing with this. So just take a note, if you have a sensation in your body, try not to judge it, just notice, like, huh, my pinky finger felt an itch on it, whatever it may be, and just, just make a note of that, see if there's some connection or association that you have with that feeling and what's to come. Now, finally, as a way to close this practice, let's open our eyes if you haven't already. And just allow yourself to receive in all of your senses. See if anything is different or new when you're using all of them engaged at the same time. When you're ready, you can go ahead and offer your own blessing or gratitude to those ones that you connected with this morning.
All right. So thank you everybody for coming. Uh, anyone who wants to stay for our chat right now, you're welcome to do so if you need to go. Just thank you, thank you for coming. And uh, whoever wants to share about their experience, what that was like for you today, you just, you know the drill. Wave your hand and I'll call on you. And I will say, actually, I'll, I'll start with a little story. Yeah, actually, Anne, why don't you go and then I'll tell my story. I wish everyone could have my day right now. <laughs> Julia, your son looks a little, it looks warm, but kind of cold. It didn't get above freezing on Saturday and I'm at 60 degrees. It's loud here. It's busy. The insects are buzzing. I just, I just let myself go. Those red-winged blackbirds are flocking. Um, I had, yeah, the bees, I have a bee buzzing around me. It's, there's daffodils sprouting. I wish this day off for all of you. So, cause Tuesday night is gonna get down to 24 again. <laughs> but just the sounds, it was loud. It was, and they were everywhere. So yeah, it's a good day. It's full, it's full. Right on, Anne. Yay. Thanks for sharing that. It sounds like lots of joy in that experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, Julia, please. Well, I, you know, this time of year, traditionally, I've thought of not as spring, but a time of anticipation, you know, and I really treasure kind of that, um, a kind of a time of looking forward to anticipation. You know, it, it just has qualities that I enjoy. Today it's supposed to get up to 84. Now it's supposed to be 44 on Wednesday, you know, like this. But I, I got the feeling this morning, how do I feel? It's like I've sent out invitations to a dinner party to, you know, my best friends. And they show up two nights early. And, I, you know, I have really mixed feelings about it because I'm scrambling to kind of do the late winter cleanup of, you, you know, because I, I leave a lot of stuff in my yard for, um, you know, for overwintering. And then I, I wonder, you know, is it going to be really cold again? And I'm, am I going to, you know, well, uh, so it's, uh, yeah, you know, I, it's, I do try to enjoy, you know, take advantage of days like this. And um, now the birds are singing. They were quiet a while ago when I was listening. Uh but it's a bit un unsettling uh, to me. And it's just not supposed to be like that. And yet it is. So what do I do with that? You know, so that's where I am. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, that's, um, sorry, loud truck. Um, hmm. That unsettling feeling, is that because there's a judgment around what's supposed to happen or just like is that what spring evokes in you this like early anticipation time is like unsettled because there's so much to do it's like my time of anticipation and preparing for spring it has been taken away it's like it yeah so so in preparing for the dinner if dinner party i didn't get a chance to do that they showed up, you know, and so we're going to have covered as pretty bare. <laughs> right, right, right. I understand now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I think about, oh, is this going to be the norm now with climate change? And I think probably not. Uh, I think we're going to have probably some severe cold, you know, more severe swings. I don't, I don't know. Uh, anyway. Yeah, spring is the transition seasons are are interesting in that way. I think they bring up a lot for for us, whether it's transitioning to spring or transitioning to winter. You know, um, yeah. I am right under a a red maple, and I've never looked up, but I'm seeing the blossoms. 
really for the first time. I didn't realize there were so many pistils or stamens or both, you know, that were would protrude from these blossoms. I had seen the buds swell and so on, but I've never looked at the blossoms on a maple tree like this. Isn't it marvelous? Yeah, tree blossoms are one of those like surprises also, I think for me too, in the natural world. It's like, what, you have a little flower? That's amazing. You know, yeah, yeah, super magic. I'm so glad you got to sit under that maple today. Aw, thanks, Julia. Thank you. Anyone else want to share their story? Well, oh yeah, go for it. Cheryl, please. I always like to share. Um, when I came out here, there were, oh, probably 20 ring-necked pigeons hanging out. As soon as I open the door, they all go flying off. But then the cacophony of crows, uh, acorn, uh, woodpeckers, um, uh, scrub jays, stellar's jays, they were just all around the yard, just flying everywhere in a frenzy almost. 8.30 is always the time that I get a huge swarm of birds coming through here or, or whatever the right term would be, but... But then when we were when you were saying what we what do you see that reminds you of spring I look I'm looking right at this beautiful ribes bush that I have growing against the fence to create a barrier from the road and it always blossoms early early it's like the uh, the harbinger of spring it'll be the first thing that does something crazy like that and it is it is uh, slowly opening its buds, and it is just stunning. And uh, the uh, two Acer palmatums I have, very, very small little trees, and they are, they their little buds are beginning to swell. And I saw them yesterday. And yesterday was warm and gorgeous and sunny, and today is overcast, and <laughs> it's just it's just spring. It just really feels like it. And when I came out here, I thought it looked like it was warm enough. And then I was finding myself shivering. And that's part of the spring thing, too. So it is, it's just, it's stunning. But when you said listen to spring, I heard the lesser goldfinch that I don't hear during the winter. I may catch a glimpse of one, but the lesser goldfinch was starting its little and right up there in the tree right above my head so or above my eyesight it was just perfect absolutely perfect so thank you for this opening of spring for me yay you're welcome you're welcome yeah i i know sometimes especially when we're still early on in that transition it can be almost easy to i don't want to say ignore but maybe disregard or not notice some of the subtle changes, unless we take a moment to really listen and really look, um, they can kind of sneak up on us, some of them, you know, and then all of a sudden it's just like, there's a whole neighborhood with like all these trees in bloom. And you're like, when did that happen? You know, <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, this one story I wanted to share just briefly, the, a friend of mine told me, and I, I'll have to ask him for the reference, because I don't remember what um, what tribe this man was from, but he, was telling me about a native man that he knew and this this guy was it was like let's see i think it was the father his this man's father and this they, they all live in this community somewhere and and this this girl came, came in i think she like works with them occasionally and and he said oh your your father's coming today and she said oh no he was supposed to but he's not he's getting he's delayed or this or that he called a you know like last night and told me he'd be delayed and she he said no, he's coming today. And she said, you know, I've learned to trust, trust that. And then she asked, she said, well, what, what, how do you know? Like, you always know when my dad's coming. And he said, oh, I always get like an itch under my right armpit. And that's how I know your dad's coming, you know? And, um, and there's this thing, I think, that, that um, certain natural peoples have where there's a trust and, a, and an ability to listen to those subtle sensations that our body has that tell us things. And I think that oftentimes, you know, we all have that capacity 
to have to, to know those kinds of things but whether or not we honor them like a lot of us how many of us would have like an itch under our armpit and just scratch it and ignore it and go let it go away you know and not think about like every time that this person shows up i have an itch under my armpit you know and that i now i can know when this person is coming even before they get there because my armpit starts to itch you know and um i just really those kinds of stories inspire me with the capacity of what humans are able to do and just reminding us that we all have that ability as long as we are able to really start to listen to ourselves and trust that that knowing that our bodies have and so so yeah I, I love doing things like this where we can just start to let ourselves have these sensations and feel them and take note of them like oh, I had this funny feeling in my knee you know I don't know what it was about and then every time you come outside and you sit in this one spot and maybe the crow flies over you have a funny feeling in your knee and then you get to the point where you're like oh that crow's probably nearby because I have that funny feeling in my knee you know so just wanted to put that little bit of possibility out there for for us and uh, what we can start to stretch for in in our capacities in, in the world so anyone else want to share a story before we go anything else we didn't we didn't gather today yet Stella, please, yeah. Okay. Um, this is a story from last year that carries over to this year. And last year, I was so concerned about our plum tree, and it didn't have any blossoms on it. And I thought, what is going on? You know, why isn't it blossoming? And then one day, there were a couple of blossoms, and I looked out. And there were some gold crown sparrows in the tree with blossoms in their bills. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think they were eating the blossoms as fast as they came out. So this year I'm watching the same tree and there are a few blossoms, not too many. Everybody else has got a lot of blossoms, but I just have a few and lots of gold crown sparrows. That's so <laughs> cool, Adela. It makes me wonder too, like if that plant will start to learn, you know, if it'll start to hold off on blossoming maybe a week or two because it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want you guys to get all my blossoms. Or maybe it'll hold back on a few of its blossoms and be like, all right, we gotta wait just a little bit. And, but that, what an amazing observation, Della. Right on. That's that way to go on that one. Yeah. <laughs> what are you seeing, Cheryl? What is it? <laughs> Cheryl, you just saw something. I can't, you're on mute, so we can't hear you, but. I just heard a uh, red shouldered hawk. Oh, I saw your mouth go, oh my God. Really, really loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. And I sorry you were you were you raise your hand. Yeah, you talked about uh, Della's tree possibly learning. I read about holly bushes and certain plants that adapt to um, detour animals. Holly bushes won't have the spikes on them unless they're lower and like some deer eating them trigger them to um, grow the spiky parts. I've read that. And I think it's some like the pin oaks and those kind of things. We call them rustle trees because they hang onto their trees, their leaves way what and they rustle in the wind. And they do that to prevent animals from eating their butts. So maybe Della's tree will learn. I don't know. It's gonna be cool to hear over time what what the story of your plum tree is, Della. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. go talk to it. Yeah. Tell it to listen to the listen to the holly and the and the pin oaks. That's awesome. And I'm sure I know knowing Della, she's probably happy to feed her birds, but I imagine you also love your plum too. <laughs> it's a balance, yeah. Well, thanks everyone for coming today and playing again. And um, yeah, I'll do my best to get our reminders back online, but otherwise just know that we'll be here next week at this time. And um, it's so good to see you all. Have a beautiful week and just keep those ears and eyes listening and your heart and your, your body feeling and uh, see what starts to come. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Later, alligators. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs>